So are aerodynamics important on carts? Are they even going fast enough to create downforce? We certainly know they create drag. Well, I am not an expert in aerodynamics, but I have a mate who is. In fact, I have a mate who's got a master's degree in aerodynamics. And what did he do with his master's degree? He went to work for Jaguar Land Rover, the most aerodynamic car in the world. But however, let me introduce Naz Tremoria. Naz, Naz, I need to pick your brains, mate, because the variations on the ideas of aerodynamics around these cart fairings are absolutely like through the roof. There's so many different designs. So this is uh, ST Racing's Cart Republic in Micromax. It's Freddie Blackshaw's. Here we have a completely smooth fairing to start with. So all of that study that you put in, all of that work you do during the week, tell us what exactly is the thinking behind this smooth fairing on this, uh, on this Cart Republic. So let me just start off this class of racing. You've got uh, probably one of the smallest drivers in terms of age and height. Mm -hmm. So it means you don't have to work the, hair, uh, the air around the cart as hard because the drivers are fairly short in height because of their age. So for this, it's to minimize drag as much as possible. And as you can see, the steering wheel is relatively square behind the NAS panel on this cart. And by having a single piece uh, NAS panel, which doesn't have ducts, cuts, or vents, it means it's very cheap to manufacture probably, but at the same time, it's very aerodynamics because it doesn't need to work the air as hard. So as you can see towards the end of the NAS panel, you've got some ducts um, and it basically, what it's trying to do is push the air outboard as easily as possible to reduce the drag. You want to reduce the drag because the driver is a brick going through air yeah. in a straight line and the best way to do that is to optimize it by pushing the air around the driver so th this is the one that i even i understand it's about cutting through the air as fast as possible i mean we talk about aerodynamics being important certainly we know on racing cars but are they that important are we going fast enough to to kind of you know, are we creating any downforce, for instance, or is it purely, certainly for a Micromax, about cutting through that air swiftly? So with this category, it's mainly cutting through the air as cleanly as possible. Uh, they're not producing downforce at this sort of speed. You would have to go considerably quicker, uh, but it's trying to clean up that airflow as these guys go down the straight. And that's one of the reasons you see drivers tuck in behind the steering wheel, and it's trying to reduce that brake going through the air, which is the driver. Yeah, right. This is the this is the simplest one that even little Bradley's head can understand. We're going to move on and have a look at some more technically sort of advanced thinking with regards to fairings and how we're going to duck that air around that that driver, which is the most unaerodynamic thing on the cart. So let's have a walk. So this is the TB cart with uh, this is in X cart colours. Uh, now this is the, uh, the NASA panel which has the air going through this huge duct here and coming out of the slot here. So Nas, what's, what's it doing? What's the air doing this time? So basically what they're trying to do in terms of design, what they're basically trying to move the airflow around the driver as much as possible to reduce drag. These cars don't produce downforce but it's just trying to manage the drag. By venting the air through the NASA panel, what they're doing is trying to get the airflow up and over the panel itself and across the top of the driver's head. There's different ways of doing it and this is one iteration of that. Uh, with this, they're ducting through the panel itself to reduce the drag again. And from what you can see, the outboard sides of the panel, they're trying to push it over the driver's shoulders as well. Again, this is a different iteration. Uh, the front bumper itself ties in quite nicely to this panel. Um, it's a almost sealed flat floor uh, front end, which reduces the airflow and drag across top of the panel. So once again, it's all about getting the air around that brick-shaped driver again, isn't it? Yes, yeah. Right. Staying with TB carts, this is uh, another variation on a theme. This time, Naz, air going through this duct here at the bottom of the panel. But, and it's also coming out at the top here, but these veins, now these are new, I think, for 2025. So again, right, Naz, resident aerodynamicist, what's this one doing? This, so this is the 25 year iteration. So 
this time round, they've lifted the front up off the bumper to allow airflow to go underneath. And I think what they're trying to do is maintain flow on top surface and the bottom surface of the NAS panel. There, I think the reason they've put the uh, cutouts on the top surface is to bleed some of that air which is going into the ducts. By doing that, they, they can control the flow on the top surface of the NASA panel and again it helps to push that airflow around the driver. Instead of having a high velocity air going around the driver, they're bleeding some air off to maintain the surface uh, contacts with the top surface of the panel. So why is it important to maintain that air's attachment to this body part then? Is there a reason for that? So as soon as the airflow comes off the panels, you can't control it at that point. If you maintain the surface contacts... Is that when it's called dirty air? Yes. So if you can maintain contact with the actual surface, you can control it. As soon as you have any sort of wake where it comes off the panel, at that point you've got no control of it. So it's trying to maintain that surface contact and trying to guide the air around the driver. The other difference you can see on this iteration, the 25 model year, is they've also got cutouts on the uh, bumper ends. So what this is doing, they're channeling the air around the front of front tire and guiding it to the side panel. Again, the name of this is just a reduced drag in a straight line. Uh, round corners, the speeds aren't sufficient, I don't think, to affect the speed and the drag it's down the straight. And that's why you can see the drivers tuck in like motorbike riders to reduce that drag. And it's if you imagine the driver is a brick through the air and they tuck down, and it's fine when, you, where you're, when you're a smaller driver, mm -hmm. but when you're tall, like some drivers we've seen, 6'6", <laughs> six, six, you're an air brake. Yeah, yeah. So it's tucked down, hides behind the steering wheel, and let the airflow go around you rather than having a flat front so it, it's an, the name of the game is to reduce drag and go a bit quicker in the straight line. So here we have the Carlos Sainz 55 chassis. And again, another variation on aerodynamic thinking. This one has, has got a massive, well, duct really, going up the whole of the fairing. So what's the thinking on this one? So my view with this one is obviously the most basic because you've just got a channel which feeds air over the driver. But if you look towards the end of that slope, you've got a very aggressive ramp up, which means that's pushing the air up so and yeah, yeah, that's pushing the air up and over quite aggressively over the driver's head. That angle heavily depends on the driver's height. So if you have a driver which is shorter, you'd want less angle because you're working the air. Right. And the more you work the air, the more drag you produce. So this is quite an aggressive setup. Um, I think it'll work best with a tall driver, but if you've got a shorter driver, I wouldn't say it's the best setup, but it depends on the driver and their height. Well, this is Senior Rotax. I'm not sure who the driver is. Who's the driver, Dan? Uh, it's Elliot Dalton Ayres with uh, Hunter Motorsport this weekend, and Elliot is a, is a tall lad. So that's working well for this, this particular size of driver. Exactly, yeah. If you've got a tall driver, I think this is the best setup. Right. If you've got a shorter driver in terms of height, I would say go down a different route. But again, you can see on the sides of the panel, it's sculpted quite well. And again, that's to feed air around the driver's shoulders as best as possible to reduce that low pressure zone behind the driver to reduce the drag. So again, we're back at ST Racing. This is a, um, this is a Cosmic chassis but this Naz this is completely different isn't it I mean look at the detail that's gone into here there's a little bit of detail here on the front bumper as well that that's actually you can't really see that but that's contoured with little ducting going there but this these veins controlling the air or or are they you're, you're the expert mate what, what have you got to tell us so what they're trying to do in my opinion with this setup is they've got control the air over the driver and around the driver but the problem you have is how do you control that air smoothly and consistently? If you have a duct like some other variants that you see, with a duct you can control it to a degree. As the air exits, that's it. You, you've lost control of it. You're just hoping that it stays in the place you want it to. But having fins and veins like this, what you can do is control the air from start to finish as it leaves the panel. And 
instead of just having a duck through the middle which guides the air over the driver's head, mm -hmm. you've actually got fins which guide the air over the driver by having the ramp towards the end. And also you've got angled fins which are pushing and controlling the air around the driver's shoulder. So, so, so you're taking all of that air that's flowing across the front and you're controlling some of it around the driver and some of it over the driver rather than just relying on the, the physics and the science to get rid of the air off the car. Exactly, and the main difference with this is, if you imagine if you go and run the corner as well, where the car is at an angle, yeah, yeah. Um, at that point, if you've just got a simple duct, the air's gonna bleed sideways. Right. Whereas this, because you're controlling it harder, uh, you can control that airflow better, even around the corner. So it'll optimize in a straight line to reduce drag, but the, around the corner, it'll, I mean, I was a driver back in the day, and there's nothing worse than getting spray in your face. Mm. But with a setup like this, I'd be surprised if the visor of the driver is not clearer really? around the corner. Because yeah. he's got more airflow directly across his helmet. Uh, it's going to run his helmet. So oh, what? Oh, they, right, okay. Yeah. So the dirty air, dirty water in spray, right. this will wow. guide away from the driver's face. Wow. So it might even help with visibility. But the beauty of this setup is you're not just relying on a single duct, which can, depending on the other variants we've seen, which is an aggressive ramp towards the end. This is, the ramp on this is quite small, so drag is even less. And at the same time, it's still achieving what it's trying to do. But for me, this is the best setup. I was gonna ask you, after, you know, we've looked at a lot of aerodynamics on these, on these front fairings, these NASA panels. Is this your favorite? For me, this is my favorite. If you, if you compare this to a diffuser of a racing car, right. where you've got fins in the middle, by splitting certain sections of the diffuser, this is working in the same way. Controlling air. Controlling air in the direction you want to control it. Whereas with a single duct or single ramp up towards the end, towards the steering wheel, you, you can't control this as clear, cleanly as you can with this. So. And just to clarify and conclude, it's not producing downforce, it's all about cutting through the air as quickly as possible, and it's all about, we, took, we use the term marginal gains, and that, that's what we're doing here, we're looking for marginal gains, aren't we? Absolutely, with karting, it's, you can see if you, the field in the top 20 is split by 0 0.1 second yeah. at most, yeah. so even a tiny gain on down the straights can give you that difference in qualifying and in karting it can be hard to pass. So any gain you can get, either aero or whatever, is gonna benefit you in the long run. Well Naz, thank you very much for that tech talk. Um, I'm sorry, but you've got to go back to trying to get Range Rovers to cut through the air as best as you can. Good luck with that. And uh, that concludes our tech talk for this week.